We did it, Aaron. The DLC is finally here. Now we can... Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Shalom, Loli Goyim. It's time for the sequel no one asked for. Except not, because modern politics has reached the levels of a schizophrenic shit poster, and people are actually trying to inject their developmentally challenged, or retarded, political ideals into a video game DLC. Oh my God. Kill yourself! Now the big debate is this. He is actually a she. A troon has infiltrated the lands between. The whole time the lands were male and female. Elden Ring was always gender non-conforming. Now it's time for the take you've all been waiting for. What does Shin Nob Nob CH Rape Live think of Elden Ring Trans DLC? Who gives a fuck? Are we still pretending to care about Elden Ring lore? It's Elden Ring. No one has ever bought a Souls game for the riveting plot. I couldn't name you a single character from this game. Because they all start with the letter M, and then the rest of the letters are just fucking moon runes. I don't even know if this is the cocky choppy in question, I just grabbed an image of a character in the DLC. And if they are chromosomally challenged, you get to curb stomp this fucker, and on the game month to boot, the skull. This entire discussion is brain rot, let's just all sit down and stir a nice image of Abby Shapiro's yiddies. Don't you feel a lot more calm now? You feeling better big guy? But more importantly, there is a game under this Twitter spurgery. So my goyims, enwars, ninjas and niggers. Shadow isn't in the DLC, it's shit. Oh, it's called Shadow Realm. Never mind. The Earth Tree blocking the sun immediately kicks off with quality. Look at this opening animation. Incredible. Two years of effort has paid off, but it does look very pretty. And that's all that really matters. Personality, who gives a fuck? They continue this quality by starting with the three worst fights in the whole game. You have Dollar Tree Wolverine, who is naked. It isn't difficult, he's just cancer. Much like Big Fireman, who gets felted by a horse jumping, but takes two hours to kill. And Dollar Tree, Gatsu. I wish he stayed in the tree. I do not like this guy, and clearly neither did his mother. But it makes up for all the paedophilia victims here content by bringing back scorpions. The titty scorpions back, boys. I know she's here. Fuck this entire area. Who cares about it? Just to run through this shit. To the fog gate and into the embrace of those high protein milkers. I don't know what the fuck this is meant to be, but in the two times I've beat it, I've never dodged a single hit, yet I'm two to all with it. It's a neo enemy that somehow sneaked its way in, like the sneaky Japanese are known to do, but it drops the DLC's arbitrary silly hat, that for some reason gives 8 stat points, unironically making it the best helmet in the game. I ain't reading this shit. Unfortunately, it makes you a furry. Which is better than the alternative outcome of the DLC, making you a paedophile. Okay, better was a bit much... on par? I don't know, lock me in a room with a pedo and a furry and give me one bullet. I'm probably shooting the furry. <laughs> now add Troon Chaser to the mix. Speaking of the gear, Mr. Elden Ring made the ambitious move of adding a fingering area, and copy and pasting the lizard from Monsters Inc. everywhere. This area speaks to me. It was made specifically for me. And it's the only area in the DLC that doesn't feel like a poor man's area of an area in a previous game. Like this area, that feels like a poor man's version of an area in this very game, with poor man's demon soul skeletons and capped off with a poor man's orphan of Cos. 
but the reward for this actual garbage area. It's just bad. I can't think of any pluses to this shithole. You get to drink some trune shine from this clearly underage individual. Now time is sped up in the shadow world so you quickly reach the end result of trune shine consumption. But it couldn't happen again. 45%. There's a not pontiff boss, that isn't pontiff, and I would never think of any potential likeness to pontiff. I would however, call them the trans rights boss, because I refuse to learn a single name from this game, and killing them allows you to buy their armour, which in spite of body type, still gives you some fat milkers. But I'm a refined man, I played Club Bifrost, I only care about the dragon milk, because they added my boy. Ancient Dragon Man to the game. Couldn't just give him a name. It's in the books forever. You have a boss called Ancient Dragon Man now. It can't be changed. And for some reason he's pivotal as well. He lets you access the arbitrary DLC Dragon side boss that they put over huge. This fucker is given everything. Big hill, lightning, bunch of dead dragons, a two hour run up. And then you get to the arena. He didn't even show up. Get down! After all of that build, he's fat and disabled. SJW culture gone mad. There's also this schizo you can summon. He speaks to me very much. He is very, very, very angry. And he has an entire I don't like you speech prepared. But I'm fucking dead before he can finish it. Now after simply killing the dragon, by informing it of its own behaviour You act like white nigga You are given THE item They finally added the scaly transformation tool to Elden Ring Now this has looked like absolute shit in every game Except for Dark Souls 2, because that game is pure Kino So did they break the curse for Elden Ring? It looks like the retarded cousin of the Tekken boss. Now you may have had an observation about this video, that I am a filthy, filthy degenerate using summon ashes. One, I will never remove Dung Eater from my bar. Two, here is a guide to not throw a hissy fit upon seeing someone play a game they bought in a way you disapprove of. Go to the round table hold, locate the two kind grandmas and commute with them. Locate Bell Bearing Shop 4, continue to abandon merchants Bell Bearing and kindly partake in some salt. Nigga, you ain't funny. I touched on the derivativeness earlier, and I can't express how much the poor man's copy paste tilts me. Because when the DLC is doing its own shit, it is pure, unfiltered Kino. But Kino in the way that I refuse to believe anyone other than me likes. This DLC was made for me. When that Jap was making this giant hippopotamus boss, he was thinking about no one other than me. This boss is only topped by the new best bonfire placement in the series. A healthy... 10 steps between these two boys? This is that Dark Souls 3 copy paste, but only if they would copy paste Dark Souls 2. She's perfect. They doubled the insectoids. Now you can get a blowy while getting a rimmy from a centipede. There's just one issue, those walk piece of shit SJWs made her titties smaller and covered them more. I mean look what those snowflakes did to Laura Croft. They made this into this and then made that into this. What the fuck is this creature? Those filthy fucking- And you don't seem to understand. Wait. I'm Jewish. She's perfect. Consume the boogs, Goyim. Is that a heckin' Spirited Away reference in my $40 Elden Ring DLC? This reminds me of how much I want to brutalize Apricot for- And you don't seem to understand. Unfortunately, not everything is as Kino as the scorpion peed waifu. The mental state of Mr. Miyazaki has been destroyed. He is mind broken, possibly as a result of gooning to insect girls, because he added an area with no discernible features, a maze of literal shit that is a huge stealth section. Remember two years ago when everyone shit themselves thinking this retard actually added a stealth section to the game, then it was never used again? The madman did it, he added a stealth section to Elden Ring. 
Not only did he add a stealth section, he added God's Strongest Warrior, who was probably mentioned in lore a thousand times in the base game, but I don't care. To me this is just some anorexic bum on the street, walking stick in hand, who is stronger than literal God. In a blatant, let's just make Melania again, down to the half an hour victory speech. That is until he reveals himself as a Naruto fan in phase 2, and he is the strongest Naruto fan. So he's a weak little bitch. Speaking of weak little bitches, you have this actual rape victim, don't ask me what I did in the base game, resurfacing for his second serving. But now he's happily married. This is where the real shit is. The question to all of the Elden Ring. This nigga's trans, he shows up, reveals himself I think I'm dead pronouning and yeah. This dude absolutely wants to chop his cock off. He's a body type B born in a body type A's body. And even if he isn't, he still dragged Chadon down with him. It's over, Chud Buds. They saw you liked him. They saw you making meme videos with Radon and that shitty emo song banned in Russia, so I'm not playing it. And they decided he's either A, a homo, or B, a troon chaser. He is one of the two, there is no denying it. It's in lore. His official name in the record book is Radon, consort of Mikola. And I'm willing to bet he bottoms. Also, again, not a big guy on the lore of this game, but wasn't Mikola underage? Did they make Radon a troon chasing paedophile? Did they just make Radon Doctor Disrespect? Much like Radon, there is also a bottom line this game has crossed to make the gamers angry. Game too hard. Make easier. This isn't a part of the video, but in the editing, I've got this image up, and I just want to take a moment to say there are two paedophiles in this screenshot, and somehow neither of them are Jim Sterling. YouTube is so fucking cantrous now, it's like you just reach your hand in a bucket and you're gonna pull out a paedophile. How fucking many are there on this platform? Anyway, back to Game 2 Hard Criticism. This criticism is fucking retarded. Homosexual and bad. However, the Elden Ring player base is also retarded, homosexual, and whatever the third descriptor I used was. I think it was bad. They are very bad, weak Palestinians. Because the response they use makes me see red as they utter skill issue. You fuckers have been saying this for 10 years. It's been 10 fucking years. You can't just change git good to skill issue and pretend it isn't the same thing. Get some new material or I'm gonna start reusing Uday Hussein's material. But with my 381 IQ, I will explain why game hard is a bad criticism. A, that's the main point of the series for some reason. Granted, it's a shitty selling point overshadowing a standout series, but it is the main selling point. B, it isn't hard, it's an RPG. You can just fuck off and grind. You can get an overpowered weapon thanks to Japanese balancing, you can get an overpowered summon to duplicate the overpowered weapon, and if all that still fails you, you can just summon someone else to beat the boss. The game has a built-in older brother mechanic, and unlike real life, he will actually help instead of pulling a knife on you. UK moment. I'm very traumatised. There are also varying tiers of difficulty. There's arbitrary, we're just making Melania again, which feels forced and pretty shit. And then there's the best difficulty design I've ever seen in the series. Through Elden Ring, upon walking through a fog wall, you can just summon and the boss will stand there, cock in hand, watching like the cook they are. And you will promptly disprove they are in fact not a cook, and are a breedable, submissive femboy, and DP them profusely. But in this DLC, there are two bosses that allow you to summon, still practically gooners, but will attack immediately after, subtly preparing you for this fucker, who just kills you if you try to summon. This is actually good difficulty, taking something you could constantly do without punishment, then nearly punishing you, and finally, just treating you like a fleshlight. You need to actually point at something to criticise instead of saying, game hard. What is hard, you fucking retard? It's a hundred hour game. You know what's really hard? Fighting off the hordes of- Oh. They- They come. The- The Palestinian children. It's time for me to live. And it's time for me to die. 